So last night I saw Kang, directed by Daniel Goldhaber, and this was his first theatrical feature. He just did shorts before. It also stars Madeline Brewer, who we know from Orange is the New Black and A Handman's Tale, and Devin Druid, who we know from 13 Reasons Why. Cam explores the life of a webcam girl and uh, she doesn't just do webcam shows, she also does these little crazy stunts where she pretends that she just committed suicide and stuff like that. And one day she just wakes up and finds out that some kind of a doppelganger is using her account and doing her show pretending to be her. So this pretty much like gives you this perspective on social media, especially if you're a YouTuber yourself. Imagine one day you just wake up and find out that somebody who looks exactly like you is using your account and making their own content. Oh my God, who does this guy think he is? Are, are, are you seeing this? Dude, you did this about a year ago. You were pissed drunk. Oh, oh yeah. This film explores exactly that situation. And uh, the very good parts about it is that the editing and the way the story is told feels realistic. It feels like this girl is an actual webcam girl. The social media platform she is on seems like a legit platform. It feels like a stream. You get these stream vibes like, you know, when you're watching a stream and there's suddenly uh, these special requests from people and donations getting made. All of that works perfectly well and the cinematography is also done beautifully. Yeah, I mean, uh, Daniel and I have been working together for like 12 years. Like we met in high school, we worked on his theater company together. Um, and really when we say this is a film by us, like it's a film by us. Uh, you know, I was working as a cam girl. Um, I had him come out and shoot some porn for me. And while we were working together, I kind of like pitched him my idea, which was literally just, I want to make a movie where an audience is going to empathize with sex worker. We also have to credit the actors portraying this all very well. The thing where the movie does have its own little flaws, it's that it somehow ends up in this unrealistic territory. Um, you know, if you were really in this situation as a YouTuber or any, or a Twitch streamer or anything like that, um, Everybody with such a platform has other social media like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and so on and so on. So if any of this is like what happened in real life, I can imagine that every single YouTuber on the planet would just like go on all their other social media and tell all their friends that there is somebody impersonating them on the internet and there would actually be this a lot of protesting going on during one of the streams from the followers of the YouTuber. Somehow, um, this girl doesn't do it at all. And what also seems a bit realistic, when she starts complaining to the cops and the company where she is streaming on, they really don't care about it at all. And uh, although, yes, online platforms not giving a shit about their uh, users' problems isn't really something that is that far away. Uh, but, you know, in reality, they at least pretend to give a shit in this movie. They didn't even try to do that. But those would pretty much be all my flaws in this film. The horror and the gore pretty much set in at the end properly. This isn't really a movie if you're like into... If you're a horror fan and want to watch this movie, then you might be a little let down because it's more like psychological horror. It's more of a thriller. The paranoia of somebody stealing your online identity pretty much comes out here very well. What else bothered me a bit was the ending. It somehow felt like our main character didn't really accomplish as much as she set out to do. Oh, she feels... Um, I know it tries to like explore this whole entire world that uh, we are different people online and we are different people in our private life. And for, ev for everyone who's seen the ending, um, 
it's somehow like the message that I got was that our main character Alice slash Lola um, wanted to detach herself from her online persona and just and her normal self. A lot of this, you know, it's about a camp girl, but it could very easily be about anyone with any social media presence at all. And I think what's so terrifying about it is that we all do have these curated online identities that are not real, no matter how real like you pretend your Instagram is, it's not real. And 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 so there is this very real kind of anxiety of like, do your friends like you? Do they like who you are online? And where does that stop and start? And I think, you know, Lola comes from a place of those anxieties that we both have. It The message came across, but like, if you look at it from outside of her psychological perspective, it somehow feels like she didn't accomplish what she set out to accomplish. And that is sort of a bit of a letdown. For me, these flaws are like really minimal aspects that don't really get into the enjoyment of the movie. But I can imagine other critics, like let's say the really perky ones who like watch out for all mistakes, like let's say YMS or IHE, they would tear this movie apart because of its flaws. Uh, but otherwise, I really enjoyed this. It was beautifully shot. The acting was really well. It seemed very professional and had, it felt like they had a really exact vision of what they were going for with this film. The Q&A afterwards really elevated the message this movie was portraying because you noticed that there was a lot of thought put into this, like a lot. Screen Life movies are about what it means to live online. And this movie is about the interaction, the juxtaposition of life online with life in real life. And so from a very fundamental cinematic place, we knew that we needed to express that, but we also knew that we needed the cinematic tools to be able to express that. And I'm almost a little scared that all these messages and all this effort and all this thought that was put into this movie doesn't really come across if you're watching it without proper background knowledge to it. But it is what it is. So anyone who's expecting this big masterpiece from Kane might be a bit disappointed, but the movie does manage to entertain and to do what it sets out to do. So since it's on Netflix, it's pretty much available to everyone. So when it comes out on Friday, if you have nothing else to watch, give it a look. Don't expect too much and you will have a really good time.